This is Lucy, also known as AL288-1. She is a 40% Australopithecus afarensis skeleton discovered on November 24, 1974 in Ethiopia's Afar Depression. She is significant in that she demonstrates features of her ape-like ancestor and her potentially human antecedents. She is not the only Australopithecus ever discovered, she's only the first. There are some very common misconceptions about her made by creationists and we'll call them lies. This video will address many of them. Lie number one. Lucy's knee joint was found in a different strata two to three kilometers away. This claim was first presented by Tom Willis in an article from a 1987 issue of the Bible Science Newsletter. He quoted from a Q&A that followed the lecture by Donald Johansson at the University of Missouri on November 20th, 1986. The question was, how far away from Lucy did you find the knee? Johansson answered, 60 to 70 meters lower in the strata and two to three kilometers away. The knee joint referred to was a separate find, and here it is, AL 129-1. This was a separate knee joint, first thought to be from a monkey, but later determined to be from the same species as Lucy, not the same specimen. But look at this picture of Lucy again. You'll notice there's something missing, a knee joint. In fact, no knee joint was ever found for Lucy, yet subsequently many creationists repeat this claim. They further expound this deceit with lie number two. Lucy was determined to be bipedal by her knee joint. As I've shown, Lucy's knee joint was never found, so this needs no further refutation, but it does need clarification. Lucy was only determined to be capable of bipedality by applying symmetry to her leg bones. She was conclusively shown to be bipedal by three other factors. Factor one, the angle by which the spine enters the neck. Here is STS-5, also known as Mrs. Plays. Here is DIK-1-1, aka Salam or Lucy's Baby. Here is Tong One, aka the Tong Child. Here is STW573, also known as Littlefoot. And here is STS71. These Australopithecine skulls all show the angle at which the spine enters the skull. In quadrupeds, it enters at an angle toward the back of the skull. In bipeds, it goes straight up and down. In all of these Australopithecine skulls, the angle is straight up and down, demonstrating an upward posture. Factor number two, the shape of the spine. This is STS-14. This Australopithecus spine and pelvis, when assembled, takes on the bipedal shape of an S. The spine in quadrupeds is shaped like an arc. This also indicates an upward posture. Factor three, the shape of the hips. Look again at STS-14, this time at the hips. Now look again at Lucy, this time at the existing half of her hip. Now look at your own hip. Pretty darn similar, huh? This brings us to lie number three. Lucy's hip was broken and reconstructed to appear bipedal. Lucy's hip was indeed broken and reconstructed, but not to appear bipedal. It was, in fact, found broken and refused. It was found in a shape that could not have existed in a living organism. The first reconstruction was intended to be ape-like, but in that form, the superior pubic ramus could never have connected if the hips were symmetrical. In this diagram, the superior pubic ramus is 4B. You can easily see why this would be a problem. The reconstruction of Lucy's hip just happened to resemble 
STS-14. This is an australopithecine hip which did not need to be reconstructed. Further down the anatomy leads us to line number four. Lucy's feet were assumed to be human-like. Reconstructions for public displays of Lucy with feet were generally based on the Laetoli footprints, which look like this. But let's look again at STW 573, Littlefoot. These feet, discovered in 1994, are the specimen's namesake. And guess what? They fit the Laetoli prints. Let's compare the feet of the three species. Once again, the feet appear as a transitional. This brings me to line number five. Lucy's hands are depictions of pure fantasy or speculation. To be fair, Lucy's hands were not found. Her hands are reconstructed from the hands of other Australopithecine specimens. For example, here is STW573. Again, little foot. Here it is again, highlighted for clarity. Here is another Australopithecine hand on display at the Australian Museum. But you'll notice I've cited STW573 many times. This leads me to lie number six. Lucy is the most complete hominid fossil ever found. It appears that Littlefoot has her beat, and they are still digging pieces of her out. Here is KNMWT15000, also known as Turkana Boy. As you can see, it is nearly complete. Which leads me to lie number seven. They made up the entire species Australopithecus afarensis from Lucy's incomplete find. As you've already seen, there are several specimens from which we have determined details of Lucy's species. And finally, lie number eight. Lucy is just an ape. Actually, this one is true, but it incorrectly assumes that evolution proponents argue otherwise. In fact, the only thing unique about Lucy among apes is her upright gait. But there is one more false assumption in line number eight. It assumes that humans are not apes as well. In fact, there is no defining characteristic of apes that does not apply to humans. Actually, it was a creationist named Linnaeus who first categorized humans as a species of primate. And there you are. Eight creationist lies about Lucy revealed.
And there you are. Eight creationist lies about Lucy revealed.